Hello, welcome to another edition of Some Arts uh, from Somerville Media Center. I'm Dave, and I'm happy to be joined with Dan Mazur and Zach Clemente from the Massachusetts Independent Comic Expo, better known as MICE, which is in its 10th year. This year, it's uh, coming at you October 20th and 21st. No, I lied. 19th and 20th. <laughs> um, so we're excited to have you here. Welcome to you both. Um, so w why don't we talk a little bit about what is happening this year with MICE. Um, the special guests you have, any sort of special programming for your big 10 year anniversary, MICE. Tenth, it's the 10th year, not the 10th anniversary. Oh, okay. We're, we're, it was we had to be very, very yeah. picky on that. Okay. The tenth anniversary would actually be the eleventh year. But <laughs> so this, this is the tenth edition of Mice. What was it known in that first year as? Um, previously, before it was Mice, we did it as the the last Boston Zine Fair of the old okay. edition of Boston Zine Fair. But but starting in 2010, uh, it was called Mice. Okay. Massachusetts Independent Comics Expo. Catchier. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so what's what's in store? It, Mice is is at Leslie University. Yes, um, University Hall, eighteen fifteen Mass Ave, uh, right by the Porter Square Station. And uh, I I know in previous years the the big open atrium space is full of vendors, and then there's all these these uh, s smaller spaces that are also filled with vendors. So you, you, you just walk in, you see everybody's wares, you see all sorts of different comics. Um, to, the, to the uninitiated uh, of mice, to the uninitiated of comics, um, what's, what's your pitch to those people? Why should they come to mice? You want to handle that one? <laughs> you should come to MICE because it's an excellent opportunity to not only learn about local and you know, regional comic artists, but a really good opportunity to see a huge breadth of what's available in comics, not just what people sort of come to expect through you know more contemporary pop culture, but all kinds of different stories happen in comics. We have autobios, we have biographies, we have histories, we have all kinds of really amazing fiction. And a lot of these stories are deeply personal and often made by one or just two people um, who are very dedicated to the craft. Um, it's a great way for for kids and families to learn about making comics because they can be extra extraordinarily powerful creative outlets for, for anyone. Um, and we try to make it a really open platform. So you know, it's free to attend. All, every, every workshop is free. Every panel is free. Um, and we want to make sure that anyone who's, who's people would consider exciting at the show is participating at some level on in those programs so people can come check them out like oh I love that cartoonist I want to see how they do inking I love this this um, this artist I really want to see how they approach a page we try to build programming around that um, and it's always a really excellent time to learn and to see what's out there great I would say yeah if if you are an independent comics fan um, you will be in heaven um, if you don't know what independent comics are, um, it's free, and uh, <laughs> this is a great, you know, risk-free way to find out. And it's very different from uh, if you have an image of comic cons, fan expos, that kind of thing. It's it's completely different. It's all artists. It's all creators. Um, it's very um, accessible. You know, you can see the, their work on the table and talk to them right there. Um, and it's just a, uh, it's an extremely, um, it's a space full of creativity and color and um, uh, art and, and literally all ages, I would say. It's great for kids, but it's not just for kids. That's, that's one thing that I notice, especially about mice, of all the, the different comics expos that I've seen, is that, um, that there's a big uh, range in ages. Um, so you have very young people who uh, grasp onto comics very quickly, and then you have, you have older people, um, and, and just you see, you see everybody like talking comics and sharing ideas and, and learning more about artists that they like and, and learning more about artists that they're just finding out about. And that's what I really appreciate about MICE. Yeah, we've definitely learned over the years how to best create those spaces and create sort of an ambiance that is accessible for so many age, different ages. Uh, it sort of starts with our guests 
we always make sure to have at least a couple guests who kids are really excited about right now. We can run a really big workshop with them. It's always a huge draw. Then we have, you usually have a couple guests who are very YA accessible, people who are middle school to late, early high school are really into, and then we sort of have uh, free and clear ground from there. Mm -hmm. uh, we try to make all of our workshops, at least like 80% of them, definitely like this is, like if not meant for kids, very accessible to kids. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there we, we try to have something more more specific and maybe more for people who have a lot more experience, yeah. who can really learn something from it. Um, and the panels, they tend to be, they skew a little older because it's just a lot of talking, frankly. Yeah. Um, but we try to have a couple that are really sort of, uh, if not engaging or like uh, interactive, at least very, very engaging. Like Iron Cartoonist, run by our fr friend uh, Zach Gialongo, is always a really fun time for anyone. Yeah, I think we've always tried to have the panels. I mean, panels are just naturally going to be more for, for adults than kids because mm. they're people talking mostly yeah. but I think we also try to have panels that connect comics with um, other um, endeavors or fields of life so a lot of uh, the interaction between intersection between comics and um, and education um, various uh, political aspects to comics um, but also just you know very comic specific creative discussions as well. We've run a number of comics and health events. Which comics, are comics and health, of, comics and mental health. A lot of friends in those fields in Cambridge and Boston who do comics, so we try to bring them in and make sure they have a platform to talk about this stuff. It's great. Yeah, it seems especially like in, in Cambridge in the Boston area where you have a lot of, a lot of very academic oriented uh, endeavors, very science-oriented endeavors, that it seems like a natural fit to have panels along those lines. Um, Zach, you had mentioned um, the guests uh, that, that you bring into MICE each year. Um, that's a nice segue to talk about the guests that you're having this year. Yeah. Um, you wanna, do you want to talk about some of these amazing comics that you brought and who's going to be at MICE? Yeah, sure. Um, so we have uh, 10 guests this year, which is the most we've had in a, in a ever, I believe. Um, it's a bit daunting, but a lot of fun. So um, we're really excited to invite some old friends back as guests. One is uh, Kathy G. Johnson. They just made this amazing book called The Breakaways. There's a camera right over there. Um, it's about a bunch of girls who are pretty bad at soccer, but great at being friends. Um, very sweet. It's been really exciting. A lot of, it's been really blowing up in the YA space. We're really excited to have them. They've done workshops and exhibit with us in the years past, so we're so, we're thrilled to have an excuse to, to bring them back as a guest. <clears throat> also, um, we don't have the book with us, unfortunately, but an old friend of ours, uh, Ellen T. Crenshaw, used to be in the Cambridge area, has moved away, but is coming back as a guest along with um, another longtime friend, Colleen A. F. Venable. They worked on a book together called Kiss Number 8, mm -hmm. a long time in production, and we're so thrilled to have them back for that book um, because they're both old friends and really deserve uh, a great platform. Um, we also have, oh, we don't have the book with us, unfortunately. <laughs> but, um, uh, local powerhouse, honestly, she really is. Erica Henderson, she worked a long time for Marvel's Squirrel Girl. Mm. Uh, she has a new book out with this wonderful writer named Kyle called uh, Assassination, which is everything Erica loves. It's all uh, 80s action movie tropes and all kinds of really funny stuff. Um, she's a spectacular cartoonist, and we've been ma basically waiting for any possible excuse to bring her back as a guest. Um, so we're, th we're really excited to have that. Um, and so Dan and I split this up. But lastly, the one I want to show off is uh, Ronald Wimberly is a spectacular uh, cartoonist living in, uh, in Brooklyn. And he did this amazing book called Prince of Cats. This is the reprint of it. Um, which is, which is a, based on Romeo and Juliet, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a Harlem retelling of Romeo and Juliet. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, Ron's also been working on all kinds of amazing things. He has this ongoing uh, broadsheet collected series that's not just comics, but also essays and and advertisements, all this beautiful like collective things called Lab Bible, L-A-A-B, by um, and it is just absolutely incredible. The second one will be out in time for mice, um, and he's just been doing some incredible stuff, and we're really thrilled to have him. And I, I think also it's great because the, the the range of guests sort of illustrates the that age range that we're talking about too, because um, Kathy and Ellen and Colleen. Um, and are definitely in the the YA space yeah. um, with their current work anyway, um, not because Kathy has done a lot of a, a range of things. But then we have um, a couple guests that we're also really excited about. Another uh, 
artist that we've wanted to have, probably dreamed of since the first mice, uh, which is Jaime Hernandez, one of the, uh, the Hernandez brothers who have been creating a series um, called Love and Rockets um, for uh, nearly 40 years now. Um, one of the, uh, the, the most, um, I don't know, iconic titles of, the, of uh, alternative comics starting in the 80s and continuing right up till now. And, um, and definitely an, an adult uh, series. Mm. Um, so Jaime, uh, Jaime created this, uh, this group of characters uh, who he's been um, following for all this time. Um, who've been growing older and their relationships have been developing. And one of the, the really fantastic things about his work is that he sort of blends um, slice of life um, relationship comics with uh, superheroes and science fiction um, in this kind of seamless way where you sort of believe that it all exists together. Um, so anyway, that's, that's a real coup for us to have one of the Hernandez brothers at our show. And then uh, Diane Newman, um, who is, um, goes back to the underground era. Diane Newman was one of the original members of uh, women's comics, uh, which was the feminist uh, brand of underground comics, and uh, uh, later collaborated with Aline kaminsky Crum on a series called Twisted Sisters. So um, that's covering a, another um, long range of independent comics history. Um, and Diane has recently edited an anthology called Drawing Power, um, which is uh, women's uh, comics about sexual harassment and sexual violence. And um, there are three other co uh, contributors to that um, anthology, so there will be a panel discussion um, about that book and how it came together and what's it, what it's all about. Um, so I think, did we mention Ben? No, we haven't, uh, or Kurt. Or Kurt, <laughs> and, and, and Kurt Ankeny, another, another great local artist. Um, sort oh, that's of, a nice looking book. Yeah, coming into his own um, now and starting to get published by, um, who published uh, Pleading with Stars? Oh, Ad House. Ad House. Ad House. Um, published by, you know, I guess what we'd call major independent comics publishers. And again, Kurt is someone who's um, definitely, um, um, well, he, his comics are very personal, um, beautifully drawn um, in a range of media, and um, a, a real contrast to the YA um, or kids' comics as well. So, again, something for everyone. Something our, for everyone. Yes. Yeah, he actually recently had some uh, really nice journal comics posted on the Comics Journal, which is one of the longest running independent comic, um, like, Journalism houses, uh, reporting sites. It's really lovely. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's beautiful work. Mm -hmm. And um, and Ben Hatke. Ben Hatke. Um, a a very popular um, creator of I guess you'd call them kids even more than YA. Yeah, I would say kids. Yeah. yeah. Um, Zeta the Space Girl and Mighty Jack. Mighty Jack. Yeah. Mighty Jack. Um, and again, on another artist that we've been wanting to get at Mice. Um, who should bring out a, uh, a lot of very young fans to, to see him. And he's doing a workshop. He's doing a workshop, and uh, we're, we have the wonderful opportunity to share him with uh, the Boston Book Festival, which is also having the same weekend. So we'll be, he'll be running around a little bit through Boston uh, on behalf of the both of us, and we're really thankful that he's both coming and is willing to do that for us. And it is. It's really nice that we have um, artists who started just as regular exhibitors <laughs> um, now coming as, uh, as highlighted special guests. Very but cool. I think it shows how special all the 200 odd cartoonists yeah. at our show is. You know, the, mm -hmm. the, the special guests are great, but um, the quality of the comics and, and the people is just really great from table to table. Something I want to point out to that to that regard is, so our show poster, if I can just show it off again, is uh, done by the wonderful um, Hartley Lynn, an artist who's been with us multiple times. He's been a guest, he's been an exhibitor, um, based out of Toronto, incredible artist. And if you notice, I mean, if you know his work and know Jaime's work, there's an absolute thread of connection of influence between Jaime and um, Hartley. So it's so exciting that we have Jaime's name on the poster that uh, Hartley got to illustrate, so. 
that's that's a lovely little thing that I mm -hmm. wanted to point out. It's a nice image too. I I, I like the little mouse. Yeah. <laughs> I like how my, like the actual animal is always incorporated into yeah, into yeah, yeah. mice. It makes we total it. graphic sense. <laughs> um, yeah, like you were saying, um, a lot of this work seems really personal, and the work that I know, like Jaime Hernandez, yeah, it is very personal work. So it is it is a chance to see very personal work often um, going at fairs like this as, as, as opposed to if you're used to going to a much larger more hero oriented uh, fair which nothing against that um, the work tends to be a little different um, so this is more personal work you get to meet the artist um, you get to see what comics are all about and how comics communicate and you can learn at workshops and just Baskin, Baskin at all, <laughs> and Baskin I think is definitely right. <laughs> <laughs> and I think also, um, and this is something that has just been growing and growing in the ten years of mice. Um, seeing the number of really great uh, local comics mm. artists, uh, we have a guy named uh, Dave Ortega uh, <laughs> this year who's been doing some wonderful work, and you know you might get to meet him. Uh, maybe, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, and, and just highlighting the local scene, yeah. which is really vibrant, um, yeah. and, and always has been, I yeah. think. Um, and, and it's just a chance for, for our comics makers and, and zine makers and anybody working this way to, to come together and kind of celebrate, commiserate, and... And uh, for people to become part of that yes, scene, Yes, exactly. A lot of people it, very have inclusive. come to MICE yeah. and been mm -hmm. inspired, and, you know... MICE is how I got into it. Yeah. Very cool. Oh, totally, yeah. yeah, yeah, you can sometimes go to a fair... Um, and and feel, feel like it's very um, cliquish or closed off. That's not the case with mice at all. And, and mice has always been very inclusive and welcoming, and, and about learning and about sharing ideas and and sharing um, a sense of community among comics. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, Zach, you started as a volunteer at mice. Yeah. So this oh, is cool. my fifth year on the committee, but the year before that. I had recently moved to Boston and was like interested in, in the comic scene. I didn't know where to go, and I saw they're looking for volunteers. I'm like, well, I've volunteered before. I've done. I've helped with events before. That sounds like a great time, and I absolutely loved it and <laughs> haven't stopped pretty much because, cool. you know, the difference between volunteers at Mice and us is that we just volunteer year round. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's it's a it's it's been a wonderful wonderful place to sort of express that interest, that curiosity, and and, and now this love of of the scene and the medium and the craft. I think it's a labor of love for everybody, and mm -hmm. I like to think that that comes across in the atmosphere of the show. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, well, if you're working in comics, it, it often is a labor of love, so it makes sense, that, <laughs> makes sense that a comic show uh, celebrating that would be also. Um, well, I appreciate you both coming in today and talking about mice. Uh, it's a show that I, I love and I look forward to every year, and uh, we encourage everybody to get out there. Um, Zach, Dan, thanks for coming in. Thanks for and, uh, thanks. We look forward to seeing you in mice. Yeah, yeah. me too. See, see you in mice. See you in mice. <laughs>